Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Agave Talk, your number one source for everything agave. We appreciate you being here with us today. Today I am really excited. I got a brand new Sotol in front of me and I am ready to share this with you all. Yes, if you are coming from the agave world, the mezcal world, tequila, right? But you've never had Sotol, please, please, please go find yourself a bottle. I've done many brands. I have shot many reviews. Uh, go watch those videos and stay tuned right now because I am bringing you a brand new brand, Acronimo. Yes, Acronimo uh, usually stands for an acronym, right, in English, but Acronimo, Sotol Blanco right here, coming in at 42%. When we talk about, you know, tequila, usually we're talking about Guadalajara. When we're talking about Mezcal, we're usually talking about Oaxaca. And for Sotol, we're talking about Chihuahua. Yes, Chihuahua, Mexico. This bottle right here, really excited. A lot of cool stuff, a lot of great information. Highly recommend, please go check out their website, acronimo.com. So right here, that's how you spell it, dot com. A lot of great history, a lot of great information behind the brand, but please go check that out. Um, I'm going to read you a little bit. Ended up when I ordered it, got a cool little card from the brand owners itself. I mean, look at the paper, right? Beautiful. So I'm just going to read a little bit this to you. Uh, this is a brand new female lead spirits company, and they're seeking to elevate an 800 year old curiosity. Yes. So toll the actual like, like drink spirit, I should say, so toll has been around a very long time and it is a staple in that area and this right here i am really 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 excited uh, what they're sharing here go to the website they really break down their actual like behind the scenes the family how these two people ended up making a brand i mean there's even the bottle if you see the bottle let's kind of spin this around you can see just it's very tactile there's a reason the bottle feels like this. There's a reason the label goes all the way around. There's a reason this is here. And oftentimes when we look at bottles, like we don't really think about stuff like that, but there are a lot of brands that put a lot of effort into the physical presentation. So like this right here, they're saying this clear window that goes in, notice this window right here is not like textured like the rest of the bottle. They say this clear window is made to represent looking into the spirit, right? Which can represent then like looking into the soul of this spirit into the bottle. The glass with the sand finish celebrates the desert. So you're talking about that area, Chihuahua, Mexico, all the deserts. This textile tactile finish represents the sand, the desert. And then right here, you can see the label physically goes all the way around the bottle. They say this 360 degree label honors the ongoing journey. So really cool stuff. When we're talking about brands, you know, they do put a lot of effort, not just into the spirit, but oftentimes the bottle itself really represents a lot as well. But what does it taste like? Hey, I'm curious too. If you've never had Satol before, um, it's not tequila, it's not mezcal. It's a toll. It's its own thing. It's kind of like an, a, a cousin to agave. If you've watched any of my other reviews, I've really breaking. Uh, I break that down. But satol itself is an actual plant. It's the desert spoon. It's kind of like a shrub, more so than like the physical agave plant. And it's actually really closely related to asparagus. Go down that rabbit hole. Start doing some internet searches to physically see what the plant looks like. But this is made out of two different types of satol plants, uh, Dasilirian willeri and Dasilirian sedrosanam, sedro right? Sedrosanam. So go check that out. Might sound kind of weird, but it's kind of like um, tequila if it's made out of blue Weber agave, right? If a, uh, a mezcal is made out of an espadin, a uh, tobala, right? Um, Arroqueño, right? Satol is made from the Satol plant, Dasilirian, and this is two types of Satol, Dasilirian willeri and Dasilirian sedrosanam. So there's two types of plants in this bottle. I hope that makes sense. So I'm about to open this up and you can see here 100% Satol and there's the varieties right there. So again, this is made from two different types of Satol plants in one bottle, gonna make for a really cool taste for sure. This is the very first batch of this spirit. Really excited to have this very first batch. And you can see here it says, unlock the untamed spirit of the desert, 
Crafted with passion, our Satol is a tribute to the terroir and its pioneers. We are the spirit of Chihuahua. We are Acronimo, right? Bottle number one. Excellent. Well, batch number one, I should say. Just some other regulatory stuff from there. We got some branding, and it's coming in at 42%, 700 mil bottle. Really excited for this. If you have never tried Satol, highly recommend it. And um, like, you know, I said, other spirits coming from Mexico, tequila, mezcal, coming from those respective regions. Satol is the drink of Chihuahua, and they're doing a lot of great things. Highly recommend go checking out that website. Let me cut into the band on the bottle just to get this lid off nice and neat. And with that, let your bottles pop. Oh, yeah. So really nice the branding on this you could tell they spent a significant time on physically making the bottle right and like i said if you go to the website uh, they actually have a little bit about the bottle they talking about like partnership with the actual artist so hey but overall what does it actually taste like and that's why we're here so i appreciate you being here if you have not done so already hit that like and subscribe as well as follow us on instagram at agave talk because not only are we talking about the bottle and the history what does this taste like Satol is really cool. If you've never had it, please go check it out. Expand your palate. There's a lot of great brands out there. Uh, this one right here, like I said, that female lead brand. Um, oh, oh, yes. That smells amazing. And if you are coming from the mezcal world, a lot of the production methods are the same. Uh, the harvesting, what they're doing is they're actually using about 8 to 15 year old Dacilurian Willeri and Dacilurian Cedro Sanam plants, those two different plants, about 18, 15 years old. Uh, they do shave them down, kind of like if you've ever seen an agave uh, getting the pina, they shave down the leaves, right? To get to the pina, they're doing the same to here. It looks similar, but it is different. They take those pinas and they actually cook it in earthen pits with volcanic rocks uh, for days, right? So it's kind of like that mezcal production, burying it underground, covering it with rocks oftentimes. It's going to have a bit of a smoky kind of flavor and smell, which this absolutely does. By the way, no ethanol. There is, oh my gosh, at 42%, there is no ethanol on this whatsoever. Even looking at the legs and tears, let me bring that in. Look at that. Look at that. That's, yeah, that's definitely sick around. That's creamy right there. No ethanol whatsoever. So again, hey, getting the pina, cooking it underground. From there, after cooking it underground, they're extracting the juices. Uh, they use, well, they don't say specifically. I'm on the website. They don't say if they're using like a tahona, a roller mill, anything like that. Ah, they, they do. They say it's milled, right? How are they milling it? Not 100% sure. Maybe they can come and comment, let me know. But that's, of course, releasing the fibers. They're getting then the juices from the juice. They ferment and are actually fermenting in pine wood vats for five to seven days and uh, using wild yeast that's just out in the desert. They're saying the fermentation is actually occurring in an enclosed bagazo room. So a bagazo is when they're cooking agaves or they're cooking like that plant matter. It's the actual cooked and pulped leftovers. So all of those leftovers, they're just left in the room as well. Um, it's kind of like the solid waste after you crush it, ferment it, all of that stuff. Uh, it's just kind of the byproduct. They're cooking and fermenting in that room as well, which is then adding some flavor to it, they say. And then, of course, distillation. So they take all that juice and they're distilling in traditional copper pots. And uh, then they bottle it by hand and label it by hand. So you can even see that is a hand-painted number right there, right? So, hey, let's take a sniff. Uh, cheers to the whole team. And uh, let's see. Like I said, I mean, it's definitely, it smells like Satol. So if you know what a great tequila smells like, it smells like Blue Weber Agave. That's what tequila should smell like, right? If you have a great mezcal, depending on the maguey they use, it should smell like that maguey. Satol is the same thing. It should smell like Satol. It should smell like those Dacilurian plants. Oh, and this absolutely does. It's got a nice smoke to it. You're getting some of that pine wood in there for sure. But it really, first and foremost, smells like the Dacilurian plant. 
how does that smell? Where well, you're going to have to go try some Dasilari and you're going to have to go try some high quality Citol. But um, it's along the line. It's kind of agave ish, like even like sweet potato. But it's more. It's more rustic. It's got kind of like a hay, like a wet hay that's been smoked. A lot of smoke on here, but in a really nice, clean way. Even like, oh my gosh, you, you're definitely getting that caramelization from the wood, from the actual pina, like as it's cooking underground, those caramelized sugars, molasses. Oh my gosh, a little bit of nutmeg in there. Yeah, a little bit of nutmeg in there, but it's more, like I said, it's it's that pine. Got a little bit of oak to it too, but it's like, ah, oh, it's just like burnt put it like a fresh burnt oh there's oh my gosh that just that smells amazing it smells like a delicious caramelized campfire um that's oh man let me take a sip <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Ooh, that's interesting Ooh, now when we're making satols, a lot of satols are made with the Dasilerium willeri. That is a very common Dasilerian plant that is used for satol production. But when we talk about like mezcal, right? How there's some rare maguey, some rare agaves. You start getting away from the espadines, right? Um, oh my gosh, there's a lot of great stuff out there. That's where that Dasilerian cedro sanam comes in. And this, the flavor on this, let me take another sip. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is so different. I would love to know what is the makeup, the percent of the two plants, right? How much Cedro Sanam, how much Waleri is in there? Um, and what is that balance? You know, 80-20, 60-40, 50-50. Because... This is absolutely, that Cedro Sanam is, is really prominent, is a very prominent flavor in this um, as compared to that Willary. You're getting a little bit, like I said, it's kind of like a cousin to asparagus. You're getting some asparagus in there. You're getting some bell pepper. Uh, let me take, oh my God. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. It's even like, like melon. You're getting like melon, like cantaloupe little bit of white pepper on the back for sure this is not spicy um even at 42 percent, like i said zero ethanol whatsoever but it's kind of got like a basil bell pepper asparagus mixing with melon hazelnut walnut kind of vibes that sounds weird i know but this is delicious let me take this last sip mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh yeah, that's even like toffee. There's a lot going on in this bottle. Honestly, this is delicious. Um, Satol, there's just more and more brands coming to the market year after year. And it's kind of like how Mezcal has exploded over the last few years. Um, even more so now, like there's a lot of mezcal out there. You go to any great uh, cocktail bar, restaurants, there's a lot of mezcal cocktails you're going to start to see Satol more. I'm telling you right now, there's a lot more brands coming out. There's it's, there's a market for this. And especially in cocktails, this is going to make a killer craft cocktail for sure. And um, oh my God, I would love to see this with some brine, even like some pickle juice or something. That sounds disgusting. Yeah, I just made a new cocktail. Anyways, this right here, shout out to the whole team. This is delicious. I really enjoyed this, especially with that addition to the Waleri, the Cedro Sanam. I love it. Shout out. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you being here. If you have not done so already, hit that like and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. All right. Take care.